So yeah, thanks, Matt, for joining us today. Could you please introduce yourself and Beyond FS? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, th thanks for having me. So my name is Matt Neal. I'm one of the directors and co-founders of Beyond FS, um, also co-founder of the FinTech Innovation Network. One of the uh, Beyond is, is a transformation consultancy. We we work with financial institutions to um, help them deliver critical change um, around client onboarding, operations, and compliance. So simply put, is we help lead and design and shape uh, and also deliver uh, critical change programs uh, for financial institutions. So there has been a huge amount of change in operations and compliance over the last 10 years. Uh, it's been a major area of investment for most financial institutions. Do you think we are now at the end of that investment cycle? I think it's probably actually the opposite in some ways. So, I mean, we've been delivering change and working alongside financial institution te teams on the ground for the last 10 years or so. And in all likelihood, you know, in reality, we probably won't see investments on the scale that we've seen over that period where we've seen, you know, for instance, huge teams have been built out to manage policy process and huge investments have been made in data and technology as well. But we think most in financial institutions should be looking at these areas now with a call it kind of an invest to save mindset. So this means thinking sort of strategically about how you can fundamentally move forward and ensure that the business and operating model will work to support their objectives for the next five to you know, to 10 years. So in most organizations, they've got a significant challenge because they've got a really complex landscape, which is built up over time. And they've got probably what, what, what is a huge backlog of what we can call change debt areas that they want to change, but kind of haven't got the budget resources or, or maybe capacity to get to. So the only way for financial institutions to really address this is to step back and recognize that short term initiatives are not going to work here. They need to see that this is an opportunity to sort of set out a long term vision for their business and, and look to sort of simplify, streamline and, and consolidate um, across their entire operating model. So really, they, you know, that, that can really help to drive out the benefits around, you know, efficiency, better risk management and an improved uh, customer experience. So, yeah, I think the, the appetite for investment right now is not as high as when new regulation is, is hitting. So getting that vision in place is really critical. So you can start to build out that case for investment. Um, so it's definitely not the end of the investment in this area. In fact, I think there needs to be sort of a new phase of investment to, to ensure that most organizations are actually set up properly um, for, for the future. Thank you, that's brilliant. Um, so my next question is related to the long-term goal, which is uh, with all the investment that has gone into operations and compliance, why is it that uh, these areas require further investment? Well, I think looking back, I think the, the first reason why there's been a lot of investment in this, in this area has really been in response to this sort of huge wave of, of regulation that has hit financial institutions and, and other regulated entities over this last period. I think this this sort of wave of regulation you know, has created a huge amount of change within these organizations, probably alongside technology change, where we've seen sort of rapid advances and a move towards digitization are probably the two main factors of driving this, this, this pace of change. So I think a lot of organizations over this period have simply been sort of trying to keep up uh, and deal with um, deal with this and making sure they're sort of meeting their re regulatory kind of obligations and what that often what that often means is that they've developed quite tactical solutions, which are maybe not very robust. They maybe don't have the controls um, in place that they should. Maybe they're not very efficient either. And these have, you know, we've seen this time and time again where these have been deployed to just kind of get the job done and, and, and make sure you meet those deadlines. So I think the pace of change is, is one. Um, secondly, I'd probably say that I think a lot of the solutions that have been adopted even the more strategic ones that were like, say, say, five years ago, are not really as fit for purpose anymore, or some of them aren't. A lot of these solutions are quite inflexible and, and have a high cost to maintain. So there's really an issue with not only the sort of legacy technology, but even some of the newer technology that was, say, adopted five or so years ago, um, that th these need to now be looked at. Um, so I think in terms of sort of uh, in terms of why these areas require further investment, I think pace pace of changes is, is is one, and 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 the, there's that has meant that there's not always been the opportunity to be really strategic about the way you you tackle the challenge. 
plus the availability of sort of newer, better technology, there's sort of there's definitely now an opportunity to step back and, and make a fundamental step forward and ensure the organization and the whole operating model is kind of fit for the future going forward as well. Thank you. So given you are saying that the organization should step back, uh, be strategic and look to sort of uh, invest to save, uh, how should organizations decide which areas to invest in and how do they ensure they're investing in the right things? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, I mean, every organization is is faced with a, I guess, a similar challenge. They've got a lot of competing priorities, but limited budget. So inevitably that leads to choices around where to invest. And there's always going to be a lot of things to fix uh, versus, you know, doing the more strategic things. So the decision that every organization faces is whether we should spend budget to max, well, like where should we spend budget to maximize our returns? So generally, the strategic priority of the organizations, you know, should be set from the top of the house. And this should shape kind of generally where investments are being placed. For instance, it might be around efficiency, either be the main driver or customer service, or you might, they might be trying to bring business lines closer together. So if you're thinking about strategy should be set from the top of the house, that should help you define a clear vision for, for how your organization and your, your business function should, should support this, uh, particularly operations and compliance, right? So you then need to define specific project programs of change that define how that strategy is actually delivered and, and a roadmap to show how these will, will deliver benefit over time. So what's really, really key in all of this is like that those, those programs should, should actually show very clearly how they support the overall vision and strategic direction of the organization. I think just touching on, I mean, the standard process for this is you know, how do you evaluate individual initiatives? Well, often that's through a business case and they should not only highlight kind of how they support the overall strategy, they should outline the outcomes that will be delivered and they obviously need to talk about costs and, and benefits. I think the trick here for financial institutions is about how to make the best decisions about which initiatives to invest in. And, and we think that really sort of boils down to a few um, best practices and really it's it's, kind of repeating myself here a little bit, but re understanding how each initiative supports that overall vision. You need to, you need to secondly, sort of need to map out everything that needs to be done, right, you know, across everything and, and ensure, you know, and, and develop that sort of clear roadmap, I would say, to, to show how it's going to happen over time. I think getting the governance right is absolutely critical in that process as well. Um, to make sure you're making sort of the best possible decisions and 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 get effective at making quick decisions as well so you so you can always keep keep the momentum going forward as well um you know we always think about looking at total cost of change or total cost of ownership not just not just the individual kind of cost of an individual individual function but really look at kind of the whole the whole process and and really trying to tackle the final to say tackling your sort of tactical fixes and things you need to know you know need to get fixed through some of those strategic initiatives as well thank you so um lastly in what areas do you think it's most critical to operate um, for operations and compliance to invest in right now to build out those uh, long-term capabilities and uh are there any areas which are important than others yeah good good question again i think that's going to be very organizational dependent and, and where different organizations are um, on, on their respective journeys. You know, we see different organizations focus on different parts of the challenge at, at, at any given time. And I think it, you know, it's, it's broadly impossible because of budgets and capacity to tackle kind of everything at once. So I think there's a number of themes we see come up at the moment, which, which all focus around simplifying, kind of streamlining, consolidating those kind of, those kind of themes. Uh, for instance, we see um, organizations looking again at the KYC and AML policies to try and ensure, you know, they're not overly risk adverse or, or prescriptive, you know, and appropriate measures can be taken then by the operations teams to, to, to kind of implement those efficiently. Um, automation is another kind of key area at the moment. It, it's interesting. O organizations trying to automate but in a smart way as well, which tries to optimize kind of how technology is being used, how humans are being used and, and, and their respective roles. We see a lot of investment in digital channels like client portals. Um, customers more and more expect, you know, to be able to interact with 
any organization, but financial institutions, uh, particularly in, in sort of a fully digital way. And, and that's really a focus for, for a lot of organizations. There's, there's a lot of other areas as well. So such as consolidation or replacement of technology, which we, we kind of touched on transforming data or almost most organizations seem to have a data project going on at the moment uh, leveraging outsourcing effectively you know there's definitely been new opportunities around outsourcing and managed services um, analytics is a huge area as well right now we see a lot of organizations not really optimizing how they're using data uh, or simply don't have it um, workflows and rules is another key key area as well so that's not necessarily kind of there's not necessarily one area which is necessarily more critical than others. The crucial thing, I think, is that all these initiatives tie into that overall vision that we've talked about and, and align to that strategy and, you know, make sure you properly plan out, like, how to prioritise benefits that each of these initiatives is going to deliver as well. Thank you for your time, Matt. Okay, thank you.